let's talk about service providers. Think of service providers as like the building blocks that prepare and configure your application. Kind of like a Lego set pieces that come together to form a complete structure. They serve as the central hub for bootstrapping your application, handling all the major setup tasks such as binding services into the service container, registering event listeners, and performing other essential initialization tasks. In a sense, service providers give you a way to extend and modify the core behavior of the Laravel framework, ensuring everything is ready for your application to function properly. Laravel, as you may have noticed, is composed of multiple components. You have the auth component, the database component, queuing component, cache component, routing component, and so on. Additionally, you may have third-party packages that extend the framework that come with their own components. These components basically register themselves with the Laravel using service providers. Service providers allow each of these components to register their own bindings and configure themselves in the application lifecycle, effectively allowing Laravel to know how to set everything up. Let's take a look at the app service provider as an example. As you can see, service providers extend the base service provider class and provide two primary methods, register and boot. Within the register method, we bind things into the service container, like we're doing it here. The register method shouldn't contain any complex logic or other part of the functionality. It should just really be used to bind things into the container. The reason for this is because you might end up using or needing to use a service that is bound in another service provider, which has not been loaded yet, and therefore it would cause issues. The register method is called early on in the request lifecycle and other service providers might not yet be loaded, so you want to avoid using any service that hasn't been fully bootstrapped yet. So you would want to avoid using any service that hasn't been fully bootstrapped yet. That's why we would only want to try and use the register method to bind things into the service container. The boot method, on the other hand, is executed after all the service providers have been registered. So think of it as kind of like a loop. Laravel loops through all the service providers and calls the register method first, and only then it starts calling the boot methods. This means that it's safe to use other services within the boot method. It's basically the right place for the logic that requires uh, access to other parts of the application. Within the boot method, you can configure and customize things both within the Laravel framework and your own application. For example, if you wanted to share some data to all the views that are rendered by your application, you could call share method on the view facade and pass the key value arguments and that variable would become available in all of the views. For example, we could do view facade and then call share and pass the key value here so we'll do maybe something like name geo and then we can open any of the views so let's open the welcome blade and let's put the name uh, within the body in here so we'll do name like this and let's open the browser let's refresh the welcome page and sure enough we see that name displayed right here in addition to this, you also saw another use case, an example of the boot method within this app service provider before. We used it to define the route parameter for the transaction ID, uh, kind of like, I believe it was route pattern, and then we defined the transaction ID this way, and then we wanted to make sure that the transaction ID passed to any of the routes where digits. And these are just some of the examples. There are many things that you can do and configure uh, within the service providers. And no, you don't need to memorize and know all of them. One thing I want you to note is that the service container will automatically inject any type hinted dependencies within this boot method. Uh, so this is basically one of those methods where Laravel does the method injection for you automatically. So we could inject something like uh, payment processor here uh, as an example and then if we refresh the page now of course it's going to run through all the register methods for all the service providers and then it will execute the boot methods but we are doing die and dump so it's going to stop executing after this service provider 
But this is just to demonstrate uh, an example that it automatically injects the dependencies in the method and auto resolves them for you. So if we open the browser, let's refresh the page, we see that the Stripe class is resolved correctly. Now we could also take a tour of Laravel source code and find many service providers. We could go digging into the vendor directory. So let's open the vendor directory, then open the source of the Laravel framework directory. And in here we can see a bunch of components. We have the auth component, the routing, the cache, the file system, and so on. If we open some of them, we should be able to find the corresponding service provider for that component. For example, if we open the file system here, we should be able to find the file system service provider. And sure enough, we have that right here. If we open that up, we see that it has the boot method and the register method along with some of the other methods. But the boot and the register are the two public methods that the framework uses and calls. So you can see that the file system service provider's register method is responsible for bootstrapping the file system component. Let's open another one. Let's maybe open the database service provider. So let's scroll down. There is the database service provider. Let's open that up and we have the boot method and we also have the register method. This service provider is used to register the connection services, register faker generator, register queuable entity resolver, and so on. Uh, if we click into the register connection services, we see that it's registering some services into uh, the Laravel service container. We are registering the DB factory into the service container, the database manager, uh, the connection, and so on. So if you think about it, the name service provider does make sense, right? It essentially provides a service to the framework by either registering something into the container or executing some action in the boot method or both. Now, we already covered how service providers work on a high level uh, when we discussed Laravel's uh, architecture before. So let's now talk about how we can create and use service providers. As you can imagine, if we start binding everything inside this app service provider and executing all our uh, custom logic within the boot method, it can start to grow and it can become bloated. So at some point, you may want to extract certain pieces into their own service providers. Now, in this example here, we're just binding the payment processor to a concrete implementation called Stripe. We can extract this into its own service provider. And by the way, I've changed the bind to singleton just to show you an example of uh, usage of singleton instead of just bind. You can use singleton for services that manage global or shared state or when creating an object is an expensive and resource intensive operation and you only really need the single instance of that object throughout the entire request and so on. So I just wanted to show you an example usage of the singleton method because in this case, technically, we may only want to have the single payment processor instance throughout the entire request. If instantiating Stripe and setting up the Stripe class is an expensive and resource intensive operation and we don't need multiple instances of the same object, then singleton is the right choice. So let's take this code and let's put it into a new service provider. So I'm going to remove this as well from here. Let's open the terminal. Let's type in PHP artisan make provider and we'll call it payment processor provider. Hit enter. And we're getting target payment processor is not instantiable while building app service provider. So what's happening here is that we are injecting the payment processor here and I removed the code from the register method so Laravel is basically blowing up, not knowing how to instantiate the payment processor because we removed that definition from here. So we can either add it back or just simply remove it from the boot method because we no longer need that in there. So let's try it again. And sure enough, now the payment processor provider has been created. Let's open that up. So we'll do a payment processor provider and we'll paste that code in within the register method in here. Now, when we create the service provider using the artisan command, 
Laravel automatically also registers this provider within the bootstrap providers.php file. So if we open that providers.php, we see that the payment processor provider was automatically added in here. If you create the service provider manually by opening up the app providers here and then creating a new class this way, then you would need to add the provider within your providers array in here. Otherwise, you're going to get an error and I'll show you what that error is. But for now, let's test this out to make sure that it still works. So let's open our controller. We have transaction controller. And within here, maybe within the show method, we already have the transaction ID. So maybe let's inject here uh, the payment processor. Payment processor. And then we're going to do payment processor process and pass that transaction as an argument. Now, of course, it wouldn't process a, a transaction within the show method uh, because this is just a get request that displays the transaction information. But I'm just trying to demonstrate the working example of the payment processor being properly bound in the service container through the service provider. Let's maybe add some kind of echo statement in our Stripe uh, class. So in here, maybe we'll do processing Stripe payment and we'll echo out the ID. Let's refresh the page. We're getting undefined array key ID. What is the ID that we're passing? So find transaction, oh, it's just called transaction ID. So let's go back here. Let's replace that with transaction ID. Let's refresh the page and sure enough, we see that it works. Now, let me show you what would happen if you don't add the service provider in your provider's array. Like I said, if you create the provider using the artisan command, Laravel does that for you automatically. But if you create it manually, you would have to add this line manually as well. But if you forget, you're going to get an error. So if we go here and refresh the page, we get an error stating that the target payment processor is not instantiable. It is throwing the binding resolution exception. Basically, what's happening is that in the controller, we are injecting the payment processor. So Laravel is trying to instantiate this class, but this is an interface, so it doesn't know uh, how to instantiate it and therefore results in an error. So just remember to update the providers array with your uh, service providers if you add them manually. Otherwise, Laravel should handle that automatically for you. Another cool thing to know about service providers is that you can have deferred service providers. Now, what does that mean? What does deferred mean? A deferred service provider in Laravel is a service provider that is only loaded or registered when one of the services it provides is actually needed. This helps to optimize the performance of your application by delaying the loading of certain services until they are required instead of on every request. Now, you would make your service provider a deferred service provider if all your service provider is doing is basically registering things to service provider. So if you have a service provider that only registers things to service container, then it could be a good candidate to make it into a deferred service provider. This example here is a good candidate for it to be a deferred provider because all we're doing here is registering payment processor into a service container. In this case, we don't really actually need the boot method either. So let's get rid of it. And instead, we can make this provider into a deferred provider to avoid uh, loading it on every request and instead load it only when it's needed. To do that, we need to implement the deferrable provider interface and define the provides method. This method should return the bindings that are registered by the provider. So in this case, that would just be the payment processor. Let's die and dump the app object so that we can see what service providers are being loaded. First, let's comment out the defer interface here and let's comment this method as well. Next, let's die and dump within our home route. So let's open the web.php. Let's do dd app like this. Uh, and remember this app helper function just returns the app instance. Let's open the browser. Let's refresh the page. Let's open the service providers in here. Let's scroll down. And sure enough, we see our service provider right here. 
We also see another property here called deferred services. These are the services from the deferred service providers that Laravel provides. Now let's uncomment our code to make this service provider uh, a deferred service provider. So we'll uncomment this and let's uncomment this. Let's refresh the page and looks like the payment processor provider is still within the service provider. That's because the Laravel caches things here. So we need to clear the compiled files. So we'll run PHP artisan clear compiled. Let's refresh the page now. And we see that the service providers count is now 22 uh, and it shouldn't contain our provider anymore. And it doesn't, we don't see the payment processor provider anymore. Let's open the deferred service providers. Let's scroll down. And sure enough, we see the payment processor in here. Now, if we use this service, maybe we try to inject the payment processor within the route, you would have to resolve this from the container. That means that you would have to move from uh, the deferred provider into the service provider. So let's try that out. So let's go to the web routes file. Let's maybe inject the payment processor in here like so let's now refresh the page and as you can see the service providers now is back to 23 let's open that up and sure enough we see that the payment processor provider has moved from the deferred services back to the service providers another way we can test this deferrable provider is that we can add a dump method in here so let's do dump one let's make sure that we clear the compiled files here Let's open the browser. Let's visit the transactions page. We see that it's not printing one because we are not using the payment processor within our index method. We are injecting the payment processor within the show method. We're not injecting it within here. Therefore, we don't need the payment processor. And because it's deferred provider, Laravel is not loading it. However, if we comment this out now, let's comment that out. Let's also comment this out. Let's clear compiled. Let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh the page. We see that even though we are not using the payment processor within our index method on the transactions controller, it is still loading that uh, service provider we're getting right here, and which means that it's registering the payment processor and executing this code. But if we make this a deferred service provider and refresh the page, uh, well, I need to clear compiled. So let's do that. Let's go back, refresh. We see that it's not there. But if we go to a specific transaction page, which invokes the show method, then of course it is loading that provider. All right, so this is it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. In the next episode, we're going to talk about facades. Until next time, happy coding.